بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير السؤال الثاني question number two ضع هذه العلامة أمام الجمل الصحيحة وهذه العلامة أمام الجمل الجمل غير الصحيحة so we have to put the check sign in front of the sentences that are correct and we have to put the x sign in front of the sentences that are incorrect uh, so uh, as we know this is fail al amr and after fail al amr the noun is always mansub as we can see over here hadhihi is a fixed noun so the ending is not visible however we will say that this is also mansub amam is used as special mudaf that's why the noun that comes after it will always be majroor because it will be mudaf ilayh. Al jumal is masuf, al sahiha is the sifa. And the same goes, goes over here. Fataha aliyunil fasla. Now we can see that this is aliyun, and after that we have al. So what we have to do uh, in modern standard Arabic it's okay, but in the Quran. Uh, we have to read it like this if if we have the verse of the Quran, of course. So it will be Fataha Ali Nil Fasla. Ali opened the classroom. Yes. Uh, is this true? Is this Sahih or Ghair Sahih? Does anyone remember? Hada Ghairu Sahihin, right? This is incorrect. Um, then the next one is Ma Raja Zakaria wa Hamza tu wa Uthmanu min Makkata. Hamza. Zakaria and Uthman did not return from Mecca. Yes, what about this one? Sahih or Ghair Sahih? This one is Sahih. All right. Ma kataba Faisalun, and again, it will be Faisalunil Ajwibata. Faisal did not write the answers. Li'annahu ma fahima ala silata, because he did not understand the questions. Yes, what about number three? Correct or incorrect? Okay, it's uh, sahih. Correct. Okay. Uh, again, ma ma kataba Faisalunil ajwibata. Faisal did not write the answers. Leanna qalamahu maksuran because his pen is broken. Okay. What about this one? Ghairu sahih. Okay. Uh, he he never mentioned about uh, and the pen that his pen is broken. It was something like he did not understand the lesson. The Ammal al Amthilat al Atiyata reflect on the following examples. Al Quranu is marfur, and when you use it uh, in a verbal sentence, uh, so we know that verbal sentence starts with a verb, so Qara'a will be the verb, and Al Talibu will be the, the subject, and Al Qurana will be the object. And uh, we know that the object is always mansub. So that's what we have to reflect that it's a verbal sentence and verbal sentence starts with the verb and then it has a doer and then all sometimes it has an object. It's not necessary that it should have object all the time, but in most of the cases there is object as well. So whenever we have the object, al-maf'ul bihi, the object is always mansub. Similarly, al-qahwatu, coffee. So you say, sharib al dayfu al-qahwata. Uh, the guest drank coffee. So we can see here that shariba is the past tense. Uh, so this is the verb. Daif is the subject and al-kahwata is the object. Similarly, ad-darsu, katab al-mudarrisu ad-darsa, the teacher wrote the lesson. So al-mudarrisu is the subject and al-darsa is the object and kataba is the verb. And similarly, al-babu, fatahat aminatul baba of uh, Amina opened the door and we know that if the verbal sentence uh, for the feminine it starts with the fourth form of the verb which is Fatahat um, when the doer is uh, apparent then we have to use Fatahat Dhahabat Nasarat Qaraat and when the doer is masculine then we have to use the first form of the verb which is Qaraa Shariba and Kataba Qaraa al fi'lu الطالب الفاعل والقرآن المفعول به. So here we can see that قرأ is the verb and 
الطالب is the subject and القرآن is مفعول به that is the object and please remember this is called direct object المفعول به يعني direct object and then we will inshallah learn about the different forms of the object um, and at this one the one that we have learned over here is called the direct object عين, uh, again this is fil al amr ayyin al fa'ila now you have to specify the the subject wal maf'ula bihi and the object fil jumal al atiyati in the following sentences da that means put khattan wahidan one line tahta al fa'ili under the doer wa khattayni and two lines tahta al maf'ula bihi under the object washkul washkul akhira kullan minhuma and uh, then we have to put the case endings for all of them shakala yashkulu and when we make it fil al amr then we know that this hamza is hamzat al wasl that's why when we read it when we correct it we will not read it washkul akhara kullin minhuma sorry this should be kullin because akhar is mudaf and kullin is mudaf ilay all right so what we have to do uh, for the file we have to put one line under it and for the maf'ul bihi we have to put two lines under it however most importantly what we have to do uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we put the proper case endings for the subject and the object and when we know the case endings and then there is no need to put the lines right okay so what should be the ending of tifl and what should be the ending of al qalam yes kasara tiflu al qalama Excellent. So al-tifl uh, is the subject and al-qalam is the object. So the first one I will do it for you. And the rest, inshallah, we will focus more on the case endings. So we can see that kasara is the verb, al is the subject and al-qalama is the object. And we know that the subject is marfur and the object is mansub. Ghasalat, yes please. And the ending of amina and al-mindil. Ascent. So we will say غسلت آمنة المنديل آمنة المنديلة. So we will say آمنة washed the handkerchief. غسلت is the verb. آمنة is the subject, and المنديل is the object. Um, so we are not okay. Well, أكلا yes أسامة uh, too. So because we know أسامة is ممنوع من الصرف. Similarly, آمنة is also ممنوع من الصرف. أكلا أسامة العنبة. Uh, Usama ate grapes. Wa akalat zauja. Okay, what should be the ending of zauja? Please tell me quickly. Wa akalat zauja tuhu. Zauja tuhu al mauza. And his wife ate a banana. Now we can see that uh, akala, we because the doer is masculine, so we will use akala. And when the doer is feminine, then we will use akalat. أكل أسامة العنبة وأكلت زوجته الموزة. أسامة ate grape or the grapes and his wife ate the banana. شربة البقرة. Yes, what should be the ending of بقرة? It will be البقرة. And what will be the ending of الماء? It will be الماء. Okay. شربة البقرة الماء. The cow drank water. حفظ حمزة. What should be the ending of حمزة? Hamza too. And what will be the ending of Al-Qur'an? Al-Qur'ana. Excellent. Hafidha Hamza Al-Qur'ana. Hamza memorized the Qur'an. All right. MashaAllah. Darabat Fatima. Okay, please give me the ending of Fatima and also the ending of Bint. Okay, Fatima too. And what will be the ending of Bint? It will be Bin. Aha. It will be Bintaha. Right? Bintaha. Darabat is the verb, right? Fatima is the subject and the object has to be uh, mansub. So it will be bintaha, her daughter. Uh, Fatima hit her daughter. Qatala rajul al Okay, so it will be Qatala rajulu, the man killed al uh, the snake, bil hajari with the stick. The man killed the snake with the stick. Okay, Samia Bilal. Okay, what should be the ending of Bilal? Samia Bilalun. And when we connect it, we will connect it with Noon Qutni. Bilalunil Adha Na. Adha Na. Wa Dhahaba ila al Masjidi. And he went to the Masjid. So Bilal uh, heard the Adhan and he went to the Masjid. 
كتب المدرس the teacher wrote الدرس the lesson على السبورة on the board the teacher wrote uh, the lesson on the board now we can see that all of the sentences are starting with the verb either it is the first form of the verb when it is masculine or it is the fourth form of the verb when it is feminine I mean when the, the doer is the feminine oh sorry Hajar is the, the stone sorry um, okay yeah Hajar uh, with the stone all right thank you very much the next one is uh, so if it is the 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 stick it should be it should be bil asa okay bil asa all right then we have fatah al baqal okay what should be the name of baqal fatah al baqalu ad dukka na right fi saat al thaminati the grocer opened the shop at eight o'clock baqal is the grocer all right, so next one is Akmil. Okay, this is a very special Felul Amr. And this is the only special Felul Amr in Arabic language that starts with Fatha. Felul Amr either starts with Dhamma or Kasra. And this is the only, you can say, exception in the Arabic language where Felul Amr starts with Fatha. So this is the only thing that you need to know as of now. And inshallah, when we proceed further and when we start learning the verbs, then we will come to know more about it. Akmil al Jumal al Atiyata, complete the following sentences. Bikalimatin munasibatin, with the proper sentences. Wadabitha, and put the pro proper case endings, bishakli, with the proper construction. So, or the proper form. Shakl is the form. So, what we have to do, uh, we have to put the proper case endings. And then we have to put the proper forms as well, make the proper form of the verb as well, or the noun. Yes, the first one is uh, fill in the blanks with suitable words and vocalize, vocalize yani uh, bitha, their last letters bishakli, yes. Man fataha, yes, no, you can you can uh, answer anything. For example, you can say, man fataha al-baba, man fataha al-nawafidha, man fataha al-nawafidha, so it can be anything, right? Um, so you can put the end, uh, the noun over here. So in case we have here al-baba. So in, in fataha, now we will say that the verb and the subject are both here. And the subject is inbuilt, right? The subject is inbuilt. And al-baba is maful bihi. Ghasalat ukhti, my sister washed. Al-qamisa, al-thawba, um, you know. Whatever it is, now it's up to you, whatever you want to put over here. Uh, for example, Al-Qamisa, my sister washed the shirt. Okay, here uh, we have Al-Rajalu uh, Al-Hiyata bil asa So we will say, Qatal Al-Rajalu Al-Hiyata bil asa The man killed the snake with the stick. So there is a possibility that I had this in my mind. That's why by that time I translated as... Uh, the stick. So that was the stone, and here we have the stick. Okay, Yusufu al al qahwata. So we will say shariba, right? Shariba uh, Yus shariba Yusuf al qahwata. Yusuf drank coffee. Then the the next one is katab al mudarresu. Um, now you can put over there. Uh, why mark into? Uh, Question mark, you mean, right, yeah. So there shouldn't be, man fatah al baba, that's a question, right? Yeah, man fatah al baba. So it should be a uh, ghasalat, so you can make it a question, not a problem. A ghasalat ukhti al qamisa, did my sister uh, wash the shirt? And man fatah al baba, that's a question mark, yeah. So here we can have Hamza al istifham, or we can also have hal, both of them are possible. And both of the possibilities are there. Thank you very much. Next is number five, Katab al Mudarresu alas Saburati. So we can say Katab al Mudarresu ad Darsa, or we can say Al Kalimata, the word on the board. So it's anything that you can put over here Al Kalimata, or ad Darsa alas Saburati. The teacher wrote the word on the board. Suad al Khubza. Okay, so Suad. Eight, we can say, so add eight, uh, um, the bread, so we can say, akalat, yeah, 
akalat su'ad al khubza su'ad you know like ate the bread uh, then the next one you say qara'tu uh, now you can put anything over here qara'tu al kitaba qara'tu al qur'ana right so al qara'tu al mujallata so whatever you read uh, but you have to make sure that the mansub is always uh, uh, sorry, the maf'ul is always, the object is always mansub. And we know in qara'tu, uh, tu is the subject and qara'a is the verb. And we have learned that if we don't have form number one and if we don't have form number four of the verb, then after that, if we don't have both of them, then the noun will always be mansub after any form of the verb. The next is al uh, adhana ya hamzatu. So you're talking to Hamza, so you will say, Asamait al adhana ya Hamzatu. Did you hear the adhan uh, of Hamza? So now here in Sami'ta, uh, ta is the subject and Samia is the verb. Okay. At tajiru at dukkana. So we will say, Fatahat tajiru at dukkana. Um, the merchant opened the, the shop. At-tullabu min al-fasli. So we will say, kharajat tullabu min al-fasli. The students uh, went out of the classroom. So we have uh, at-tullab and we have learned previously that uh, when the subject, is the doer is apparent, it is vi visible, it is outside, uh, whether it is singular or dual or, or the plural, the verb that we have to use is only for the singular. Ij'al make kullan min al kalimat al atiyati each of the following words maf'ulan bihi the object wadbit akhiraha and then put the proper case endings. So now you have to make uh, al Quranu, you have to make it object. So how will you make it as an object? You can say qra'tu uh, al Qurana, right? So you will say qra'tu al Qurana, I recited the Quran. Now you can you can use uh, the verbs that you have, for example, ishtaraytu al qurana I bought the Qur'an. Um, similarly, you say, nasmi'atu uh, al qurana I listened to the Qur'an or I heard Qur'an. So now it's up to you. Uh, whatever the verbs you know, inshallah, from here, you can make the sentences. Tufahu. So you want to say, uh, and the boy ate the, the apple. So you will say, akal al waladu tufaha Or you can uh, you can also say, akaltu al tufaha um, or akilat al bintu at tufaha. Now it's up to you. You can make as many sentences as you want to. And the only thing that we have to make sure that we use these words as the object. At darsu. So you want to say, um, I I read the lesson. So you will say qaratu at darsa. And if you want to ask your friend, did you understand the lesson? So you will say, afahim at darsa. Did you understand the lesson? Afahim tum at darsa. Did you all understand the lesson? And you will say, Bala. Al Qahwatu, coffee. And uh, uh, yes, uh, you will say, Sharibtu al Qahwata, very good, I drank coffee. Uh, and if you say, Didn't you drink coffee? So you will say, Ama Sharibtu al Qahwata, didn't you drink coffee? So it's up to you. You can make sentences according to your choice. Al Babu, uh, the door. You can say Fatahtu al Baba, I opened the door, or you can also say Man Fatah al Baba, who opened the door. And then we have Al Qamisu, the shirt, and you can say My mother uh, washed the shirt. So you will say Ghasalat Ummi al Qamisa, my mother washed the shirt. So again, you can say Ghasaltu al Qamisa, I washed the shirt. Labistu al Qamisa, I wore the shirt. So it's up to you now if you know the verbs, inshallah, you can make the past tense. And then you can make the sentences like this. Now it's up to you to practice. The more you practice, inshallah, the more you will learn the verbs and the Arabic language. Um, reflect on the following examples. Ta'ammal is fil al-amr again. And whenever we have fil al-amr, then the noun that comes after that will always be mansub. Now how mithalaini is mansub? Because Mithalaini, the case ending comes with the uh, long vowels. Yani ani, aini, aini. So you say mithalani, mithalaini, mithalaini. And similarly, we have atiyani, and the dual of atiyani will be atiyani, atiyani. 
reflect on the following examples and both of them are mansub why they are mansub because fil al amr command is uh, always in command we always have uh, the verb and always we have the subject each command consists of a doer isn't it every command consists of the doer so whenever you make a command you have to make sure that the noun after that is mansub now it is mansub over here because it is doer and the doer is mansub with ani aini aini However, uh, the only exception is for the command, the only exception is قُلْ uh, Inshallah, we will learn more about it in, in detail when we f proceed further into the course. After قُلْ, it's not necessary uh, that the noun has to be mansub. That's the only exception in Arabic language. The rest, all of the verbs, all of the verbs that we have after the command, the noun has to be mansub. Okay, now what do we have over here? الطلاب ذهب إلى الملعب. The students went to the playground. Now this is a nominal sentence. Nominal sentence consists of consists of subject and predicate, right? And we know subject and predicate are equal in number and gender. And the easiest thing I told you in the previous lesson that the verb has to follow the noun. If the noun is dual, the verb will be dual. Uh, so that's why الطلاب ذهبوا إلى الملعب The students went to the playground and الطالبات ذهبنا إلى المكتبة The students, the feminine students went to the library. So uh, the verb has to follow the noun. So the noun is الطالبات and the verb has to be ذهبنا And both of these are nominal sentences. And nominal sentence consists of uh, subject and predicate and we know subject and predicate are equal in number and gender but when we talk about the verbal sentence the verbal sentence either it starts with dhahaba or it starts with dhahabat and why do we say dhahaba is from number one and dhahabat is from number four of the verb right and if the doer is masculine then the verb the sentence will always start with dhahaba and if the doer is feminine then it will always start with dhahabat I mean, the verb can be any of the verbs, but the form will be the same. So, uh, the students went to the playground and the feminine students went to the library. Now, we will reflect a little bit more on that. Uh, I explained I explained it all in detail, inshallah, yesterday in the previous lesson. So we can see over here, I want you to see the difference between the nominal sentence and the verbal sentence. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in verb in nominal sentence, the verb has to follow the noun. What does that mean? If the noun is single, the verb has to be single. What if the noun is dual? For example, we say الطالبani. So if the verb is uh, if the noun is dual, then the verb has to be dual as well. So we will say الطالبانو ذهبا. And if the if the uh, there are more than two students, الطلابو. so we will say الطلابو ذهبو, right? So now we can see here that the verb is following the noun. Here the noun is single and here the verb is single. Here the noun is dual and the verb is dual. And here the noun is plural and the verb is plural. However, uh, when we talk about the verbal sentence, in verbal sentence, it will always start with ذهب الطالبو. And even if we have two students, we will still say ذَهَبَ الطَّالِبَانُ And أَنِ uh, أَيْنِ طَالِبَانِ Right? I was thinking there is something wrong. So ذَهَبَ الطَّالِبَانِ And then we will have and also here. Okay. طَالِبَانِ What should be the ending? أَنِ طَالِبَانِ طَالِبَانِ أَنِ أَيْنِ أَيْنِ Right? Yeah. And then we have ذَهَبَ الطُّلَّابُ The students went. So we see if the uh, whether the doer is single or the dual or the plural, the verb that we have to use has to be only for the single. And since the same goes with the feminine. If we talk about the feminine, um, if we have uh, the singular feminine, we will say الطالبات ذهبت. And if we have two, we will say الطالبتاني ذهبتا. And if we have more than two, we will say الطالبات ذهبنا. Now we can see that the verb is following the noun. And when it's a verbal sentence, in verbal sentence, we will only use the habat. Doesn't matter if the doer is singular or the doer is dual or the doer is plural. 
In either case, we have to only use ذهبت. So we'll say ذهبت الطالبة when you connect it. And similarly, ذهبت الطالبتاني. And similarly, ذهبت الطالبات. So Alhamdulillah, uh, now we have seen the comparison between جملة الاسمية and جملة الفعلية. And also we have seen how to use the verb in these two sentences. And it's very simple. In جملة الاسمية nominal sentence, uh, the verb should be according to the noun. And in the verbal sentence, if the doer is masculine, then it will start with the form number one of the verb. And if the doer is feminine, then the sentence will start with form number four of the verb. So Alhamdulillah, uh, half of the exercises are finished. And inshallah, when we meet again, we will complete the rest of the exercises. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, shahadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.